This is Math 142 section section 7.3 and we are doing part two of that lecture. We're going to look at what are called half angle formulas right now. And I just wrote them all down over here and we're just going to practice using them. Um, and before um, you frantically copy these down um, or whatever, or, you know, they're in your book, you can, you can find them in your book. I do want to show you that um, I put together a page that I call the scoundrels page. And I put it in two places. If you look at this this current week that we're in, week five, it'll be showing up here. It's the scoundrels page. And if you take a peek at it, it has all of the uh, it has a unit circle on it. It has all the identities, sum and difference, half angle, and double angle formulas. I will have a copy of it for you to use on the final. So if you want to print this out and so you can refer back to it consistently, do that. I put it there. I also put it in one other place. Um, I also put it in resources. So there's that. I want to find an exact value for sine of 15 degrees. Now, as I look for an exact value of that, that's not going to show up on my unit circle. But I do notice that 30 is on my unit circle, and 15 is half of 30. So I can get to 30's value from this 30 degrees, the sine of it, I mean. So let's do that using the formula. Now a couple things to notice, both in sine and cosine, notice it has this plus or minus in it. Now this plus or minus, the answer is not going to be plus or minus. The answer is going to be resolved. Sine of 15, it's either positive or negative, but you have to determine the sign you have to determine it and it just depends on what the angle is sine of 15 degrees we know that's going to be positive 15 degrees has a positive sign so as we think of sine of 15 degrees we're going to think of it as the sine of 30 degrees divided by 2. notice that's our that's our u value u divided by 2. now again for the plus or minus it ref it refers to the 15 degrees the actual angle that we're finding not the not the half the thing that we're doubling taking half of so sine of 30 divided by 2 i can shove that into this formula and the plus or minus i know that 15 degrees was positive so this is going to be plus the square root of 1 minus cosine of 30 degrees over 2. so cosine of 30 degrees i know it or i look it up on the unit circle cosine x so it's root 3 over 2. So this is going to be the same as the square root of 1 minus root 3 over 2 over 2. All right, we are going to clean this thing up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this actual subtraction that's right in here. It's 1 minus root 3 over 2. So I'm going to think of this 1 as a 2 over 2. So as I do that, I have a 2 minus root 3 over 2. And that whole thing is over 2. Not a bad first step. Um, I'll keep going from there. This is divided by 2. So this is the same as 2 minus root 3 over 2 divided by 2. That's what that fractions do. They divide. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So this is 2 times 2 is a 4 in that denominator. So this is the same as the square root of 2 minus root 3 over 4. And I'm almost done. Um, this is this is really square root of the numerator over square root of the denominator. And I'm not going to leave that square root in the denominator, but square root of 4 is 2. So this is square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. Notice there's I have this double rooting going on here, and that is over 2. And it's positive. So sine 15 is that value. Well, you know what? Let's let's check that. Let's use that calculator. And see if we can check that. So make sure I'm in degrees. I am sine of 15 degrees. There's a decimal approximation. That's not an exact answer. I'm looking for an exact answer. But I want to know that that's equivalent to the answer I got. And the answer I got was the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. And now I'm going to close off the parentheses for this square root. And then I'm going to close off the parentheses for that square root too. So there's my whole numerator. I'm going to divide that by 2. And these should be the same decimal expansion. 
Yeah, that, there's pretty good evidence that those are equivalent to each other. So I'm looking to find the exact value of the cosine of 105 degrees. So 105 degrees, that's going to be, you know, somewhere in here, 105 degrees. If I double 105 degrees, that should be 210. So I can use 210 and shove it into the half angle formula. So notice that I'm, I'm here in quadrant two. And I'm looking for cosine. So I know that this is going to end up being negative. Cosine of 105 degrees should be negative. So that'll help me resolve this part of it. So I'm going to think of this as the cosine of 210 over 2. And again, as I resolve that plus minus uh, 105 degrees, that puts me in quadrant 2, as I saw on the unit circle. So this will be negative square root of 1 plus the cosine of, not u, but 210 degrees over 2. Great, so I have negative 1 plus cosine of 210 degrees. I know it, or I look it up, and here it is right, right here, negative, um, negative root 3 over 2. So that's going to give me negative square root of 1 minus root 3 over 2 over 2. And just like before, as I go to simplify this, I'm going to think of this 1 as a 2 over 2. 2 seconds, 2 tooths. So this combines to 2 minus root 3 over 2. That whole thing's over 2. Oops, it's negative. And just like, just like before, this divided by that is the same as this times a half. So this would be negative 2 minus root 3 over 4. And square root of 4 is 2. So this will be negative square root of 2 minus root 3 over 2. And let's check it out. Let's see if that, if that checks out on our calculator. So cosine of 105 degrees. Gives me that. It is negative. That, that's good. Negative. I had square root of 2 minus square root of 3. Close off both those parentheses. Divide by 2. Yeah, and it's equivalent. So, I am there. So let's take a peek at sine of 195 degrees. And I want to find the exact value, so I'm probably going to be looking at my, my unit circle for that. And 195 degrees would be somewhere, somewhere in here. And now let me double that. Let me see. 195 times 2. If I double that, I get, th what, 390? Let me think about that. This is 360 plus 30 more is 390. So 390 is here. Okay, cosine of 390 is root 3 over 2. I think that's going to that's gonna work for me. Oh, the other thing I forgot to do was think about, since it's the sine, 195 is going to be negative. It's going down there. So I do need to determine that. So I have sine of basically 390 over 2. I'm taking the half angle of 390 to get it for 195. I know it's negative because it's in quadrant 3, and if I just look at the, the formula, it's 1 minus cosine of 390 over 2. That's going to be 1 minus cosine of 390. Uh, when we were looking at the unit circle before, I, I saw that it was root 3 over 2, because it's the same as cosine of 30 degrees. That's over 2. I'm going through the exact same steps I was going through before. I'm thinking of a 2, uh, 1 is a 2 over 2. If I divide by 2, that's the same as multiplying by a half. So this is that. Square root of 4 is 2. I think that's the same answer I got last time. Cool. All right, let me, let me check it out on my calculator. Sine of 195 is that... And if I think about the 
last thing I put into my calculator. I can go second enter and it recalls them. Yeah, that's what I, the answer was from before. Great, same value. So sine 195 is that. So let's take a look at, at finding the exact value of cosine of pi over 12. So I'm going to take a peek at my unit circle. And if I think about uh, pi over 12, pi over 12 would be about here, like 1 12th of the way. If this is a sixth of the way, this is half of that. So pi over 12 is half of pi over 6. Like notice if I go this times 2, boop, boop, pi over 6. So, and cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And it's positive. So we're going to think of this as cosine of half of pi over 6. And we said it was positive, so that, that part that part's resolved, the positive negative part. So this is going to be the same as square root of 1 plus cosine of pi over 6 over 2. And like I said, we, we know that it's that it's positive. So cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And I'm going to think of this one as 2 seconds. So this is 2 plus root 3 over 2 over 2. Square root of that whole thing. This being divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. So 2 plus root 3 over 4. Square root of that. Square root of 4 is 2. So there we go. And let's check it out. Let's see if that checks out. Make sure my calculator is in radians for this one. And I want to go cosine of pi over 12 over 12. And I get about that value. That makes sense to me. That's a small, you know, that's not a very big angle. And that, so my width is going to be close to 1. And let me check if what I got was equivalent. Square root of 2 plus square root of the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 2. Great. Feels good. So we haven't done anything with tangent yet. And if you'll uh, take a peek at this equation for tangent, there's no plus or minus. So what's nice is that the tangent formula resolves the sign, S-I-G-N, of it. So that means that we don't have to worry about where it terminates, this will tell us. Well, it won't exactly tell us. It'll it'll get the sign right. So if tangent of u over 2, find tangent of u over 2, exact value, if sine of u is 3 fourths and u is in quadrant 2. So notice we could use this formula or this formula. They're both going to, they're, they're equivalent. They both work. But we need both sine and cosine for this. So let's do a sketch. So first off, u's in quadrant 2. And we know that sine is 3 fourths. So the height is 3, hypotenuse is 4. We use Pythagorean theorem to find this y value. So the magnitude is square root of 7. And we know it's going back, so it's negative. That means cosine opposite over hypotenuse, or x over r. Now notice these are the values of u. This isn't the value of, of half of u. We're finding tangent of half of u, though. So we actually are cutting this angle in half and then finding the tangent value of it. So let's do this. Tan of u over 2. And like I said, we can use either one of, of these two. I'll just use this one first and see how it, what it does for me. So notice I just substituted in the cosine value and the sine value directly into the equation. So as I do this, subtracting that negative is going to be the same as adding. And then I'm going to think of this one as 4 fourths. So these have a common denominator. So then I can add them together. And what's nice is the fourths divide out. 1 fourth divided by 1 fourth is 1 which leaves me 4 plus the square root of 7 over 3. All right, that's pretty good. And again, if you don't like dividing those uh, fourths out, you can rewrite this as 4 plus root 7 over 4 divided by 3 fourths. And when you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. 
and the fours divide out. Now I use that formula. I'm just going to use the other formula too, just to show that it works, what it would look like if I went that route. Sine is three fourths, one plus cosine of u. So it'd be one plus negative root seven over four. Adding the negative is the same as subtracting. So this would just be one minus that. I'm going to think of this as four fourths. So this would be three fourths over four minus root seven fourths. The fourths divide out, or you can, you know, invert and multiply. So that gets us three over four minus root seven. Now, it looks different than this, but it is equivalent. I could shove them both into a calculator and they give me the same decimal approximation. But I, and I'm gonna rationalize this denominator. So I have this four plus root seven. I'm gonna multiply a version of one that gets rid of the radical on the bottom that conjugate, four plus root seven over four plus root seven. Again, I'm just multiplying by one, I'm not changing the value of it, I'm just changing the form. So up top, three times four is 12. Actually, how about I don't even multiply that? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave this as three times four plus and so then let me multiply this one out. Four times four is 16. I'll, I'll do it up over here. Four minus root seven times four plus root seven. There's a 16. Negative four root seven, positive four root seven. That gives me a zero. Minus root seven times root seven is seven. 16 minus seven is nine. And so then notice that I can reduce this 3 ninths down to 1 ninth, and I get 4 plus root 7 over 3. Get it different ways. On these types of problems, like I often do, I'm going to encourage you to sketch so you get your signs right, S-I-G-N's right, um, get all the pieces that you need. Don't ever be hesitant to sketch something out. It'll help you help you make sense of it. Um, give these problems a try. Post stuff in the forums or message me if you have questions and print out that scoundrels page or have it so you can open it up at any time. Like I said, I'm going to I'll have a copy of that for you on any assessment that we take, including the final.